So it's a pleasure to welcome Sang Jung Kim to give the second talk in our, our series of steering committee introductory talks. And he'll be talking on the internal origin of the West East asymmetry of Antarctic climate change. So uh, without further ado, Sang Jung, would you like to tell us about this? Okay, thank you, Tom, for introduction. Uh, thanks for attending uh, this uh, second uh, SSC meeting. Uh, it's my great uh, pleasure to give uh, this talk uh, in this Anticlim Now uh, meeting. Uh, what I'm going to uh, talk about today is the internal origin of uh, West and East symmetry of Antarctic climate change happened for the past about half century or so. This result was published in uh, uh, science advances uh, last year. Uh, this work is based on uh, uh, our colleague in my institute, Korea Polar Research Institute, and uh, some other colleagues in uh, Korea. As you all uh, know, uh, Arctic warming is very fast uh, compared to the, uh, uh, the rest world uh, called Arctic amplification. What you are looking at is the, uh, the red color is a global, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the uh, blue color is a global and the red color is Arctic uh, mean uh, overland uh, surface uh, temperature anomaly. It's about uh, two or three times uh, faster than the rest uh, called the Arctic amplification. On the other hand, uh, in Antarctica, uh, it shows the uh, different trend. Uh, this is from uh, Nicholas and Bramis, uh, uh, surface air temperature trend from 1958 to 2012. It shows the uh, rapid warming in West Antarctica, but uh, very little warming in East Antarctica, or, uh, even some cooling, it's part of weather sea and uh, uh, Victoria land. Uh, people try to uh, illustrate this uh, asymmetric feature uh, using like uh, Marshall and Thompson, they attributed this to change in uh, Southern annular mode. Uh, this figure shows the, uh, now when the same is in a positive phase, uh, it gives some warm anomaly over Antarctic Peninsula and cold anomaly and the uh, rest of uh, uh, Antarctica. But as you uh, compare, this uh, doesn't match very well. Uh, the Ding et al. Uh, attributed this to uh, some uh, teleconnection from the tropics, equatorial Pacific. But uh, uh, the uh, Pacific uh, contribution has some limitation in illustrating the warming of the Antarctic Peninsula. And some there is some different results in the East Antarctica. So, uh, from this motivation, we try to uh, uh, illustrate uh, what caused this kind of east-west uh, uh, climate asymmetry. Uh, the figure A from uh, this panel is the uh, uh, re reproduction of uh, Nicholas and Bromwich over uh, land. And we also included uh, sea surface temperature over the Southern Ocean. And then does the same same period uh, from fifty eight to two thousand twelve, and this uh, temperature tra uh, trend shows the uh, warming trend uh, in the Bellingshausen and Amundsen sector, as you could uh, see clearly, and the cold anomaly in the the rest uh, of the Southern Ocean. Uh, to figure out what caused this uh, uh, temperature trend, we uh, Perform the so called EOF analysis. And the B and C shows the, uh, the B is the UF1 uh, feature, the C is the UF2 uh, regressed field uh, onto this uh, uh, UF1 and 2 or PC time series. Uh, the UF1 shows the uh, warming over the uh, Antarctic, uh, uh, entire Antarctica. And wave number three feature over the Southern Ocean. Uh, and it uh, explained the variance is 48%. Uh, 
uh, for the EUF2, the second mode is below, uh, experience variance is 20%. And uh, it shows the very <clears throat> contrasting west and east uh, temperature, and also some uh, cold anomaly around uh, on the Southern Ocean. And the D shows the uh, corresponding principal component, uh, I mean the blue color, and the red color, this is a PC1, and this is PC2. The red color is for the PC1 is uh, uh, average temperature over the uh, Antarctica. The PC2, the red color is the temperature difference between west and east. And we overlay with the principal component time series. And it, uh, it is a constant very well. Okay, from this figure, we could uh, uh, see the uh, uh, UF1 is more or less uh, uh, entire Antarctica and it's driven by externally. And UF2 uh, is more or less driven by uh, internal climate uh, variability. And we also checked uh, seasonally and which season contributed most to this annual mean field. Uh, and uh, we found out uh, the Austral winter uh, result contributed the largest to the annual mean, uh, both uh, EF1 and EF2 fields. And the uh, uh, right hand side shows the, uh, uh, the red color is the correlation between uh, seasonal uh, mean EF2 and annual mean. So the biggest contribution again from this correlation is from this uh, austral winter season. The green bar is the, uh, the difference between uh, temperature in east and west. And also blue is uh, the blue color shows the uh, 300 Pascal geopotential height anomaly field. Uh, that also gives the largest contribution uh, for this one uh, in uh, austral winter season. And we checked uh, because the uh, observation field, uh, the period is relatively short. Uh, we also checked whether the uh, CME5 models are able to reproduce these features. And uh, we used the so called common basis function analysis uh, to, to uh, evaluate uh, the model performance. And the CBF1 mode and the CBF2 mode is corresponding to EUF1 and 2 uh, because the uh, common base function is more or less a, a projection of EUF1 and 2 from the observation. Anyway, the CBF1 mode shows the uh, uh, warming of uh, Antarctica and also some uh, wavy pattern over the Southern Ocean. Uh, CBF2 mode shows the warming in West Antarctica and West Antarctic, West Antarctic sector and the cooling over the rest of the Southern Ocean. Uh, this uh, scatter plot shows the uh, UF1 for the brown color and UF2. The amplitude is the, when the amplitude one mean the model result and uh, the pattern found in the observation I show previous uh, figure is a coincident uh, this uh, one. So the most model uh, able to capture, even though it's a little bit higher than one, that means uh, the east-west uh, pattern is more uh, more distinct in the in the numerical model. Uh, Y-axis is the trend. Uh, for, for the first mode, uh, there's some trend, a positive trend because it's related to some uh, global warming. We what we call it. so the. Uh, the most of the numerical model also positive trend. That means uh, it is able to capture the, this uh, trend. But the uh, the second mode we believe is a natural uh, variability mode or internal mode. So it supposedly doesn't not have any trend, but uh, model results show slight uh, negative trend. So this is uh, one uh, the one of the reason for this uh, model's deficiency in. Uh, capturing uh, the features in the observation. But anyway, the uh, CB5 reproduced reasonably well. 
And also we uh, double check by checking the, uh, the longer term period from uh, different uh, data set. Uh, this is the figure I show from uh, Nicholas and Brahmis. Uh, the P is from uh, pages. Uh, we used the past 2000 year data. And the C we reproduce using a so-called love claim uh, intermediate complexity model. And then we uh, analyze this UF one and two. The D is uh, from uh, uh, NCA group, trace 21. They reproduced uh, uh, since less glacial maximum to present, uh, we utilize that data to analyze. And also uh, the right-hand side is the uh, simulation with the historical forcing CSM. Uh, F is CSM with the uh, uh, greenhouse gas and E is without uh, greenhouse gas. Uh, G and F is future case for RCP 4.5 and uh, 8.5. Uh, all data show this uh, similar UF1 and 2 features found in the observation. And another uh, notable feature is the, uh, if you look at explained variance, UF1 is 48% uh, uh, presently, but if you go to the future, 4.5 goes to 68. Uh, at the same time, the UF2 pattern illustrate 20% presently, but in the future, it decreases to 12%. Uh, in 8.5 scenario, it's even severe. Uh, so it decreased to 3.3%, uh, and UF1 goes to increase to 88%. So this indicates in the future, uh, entire Antarctica will be warmed. Uh, they might probably uh, uh, expedite the ice sheet uh, disintegration, not only just the uh, West Antarctica, but uh, also in, uh, in the East Antarctica. And we uh, uh, reproduce this uh, long-term evolution of a uh, principal component. This is from the observation 1958 to 2012, and we expanded this to or less uh, 6,000 years using some model results and, and the data set I show in the previous figures. And the PC1 shows the uh, like hockey stick uh, feature the gradually decreasing with uh, time. And then uh, after anthropogenic influence, it gives some very increasing uh, trend. On the other hand, the second mode shows a, a, a positive and a negative uh, variability with time. Then uh, what caused this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, pattern? Uh, so we attempted to uh, correlate with the existing climate mode that are uh, like a Southern annular mode and PSA one and two and El Nino indices. And with uh, this is annual mean, uh, and the the rest is a seasonal uh, average uh, correlation. And for EUF one, uh, most uh, the most season it correlates well with the southern annular mode, except for this uh, uh, springtime. But EUF, uh, I'm sorry, EUF two on the other hand doesn't correlate well with the uh, sand, but uh, it more correlate with the uh, uh, PSA2. So the bottom panel shows the uh, when you have a negative SAM, it gives some uh, warming trend and the uh, uh, Antarctica and also some uh, cooling trend uh, over the uh, Antarctic Peninsula. Uh, the second uh, figure shows the uh, when you have a PSA negative, it gives some uh, warming over Antarctica and some. Uh, 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 negative height anomaly over the uh, Western sector. When you add this together, uh, this is the third figure, and this uh, uh, roughly uh, similar with this uh, uh, EUF1 pattern. So SAM or PSA1 is uh, uh, more or less uh, uh, responsible for this uh, feature. Then what about the uh, second mode? Uh, to figure out the, the second mode is this uh, west warming and east uh, Antarctic cooling uh, trend. 
uh, one feature is the uh, uh, Trans-Antarctic Mountain that divides uh, east and west. So we did some uh, sensitivity experiment using NCA CESM uh, coupled model. And we uh, adjusted uh, topography by flattening or elevate, elevate, elevated uh, experiment. Uh, we ran 20, 200 years and analyzed for uh, less than 100 years. Uh, this is the uh, model of result. Uh, a is the uh, uh, the UF, uh, UF2 mode uh, reproduced in the model, uh, CESM coupled model, and with the current topography. Uh, this is the topography shape, the TEF, you can see the gray color. This is the present topography. E is uh, uh, when you flatten the topography in the in East Antarctica. F case, uh, uh, when you elevate the uh, topography in uh, West Antarctica. And the, uh, the current topography reproduced this uh, uh, West Antarctic warming and East Antarctic cooling asymmetry uh, reasonably well with this uh, uh, anti-cyclonic anomaly. When you lower the topography, uh, we have an even stronger anti-cyclonic anomaly. And then this warm anomaly expands not only to the West Antarctica and some part of East Antarctica. On the other hand, when you elevate uh, West Antarctica, uh, you don't have uh, much uh, of this uh, asymmetric feature. Uh, so what this uh, result uh, says is that Transantarctic mountain plays very important role in determining this West and East uh, Antarctic climate asymmetry. This anti-cyclone anomaly uh, developed uh, from the surface to the uh, 200 mid hectopascal. So it's more as a bar uh, barotropic feature. And also in the ocean, uh, when you have an anti-cyclonic anomaly, you have a uh, ECMAN pumping toward the uh, Antarctica. So you have even warmer air, uh, uh, warmer ocean water can be uh, provided to the uh, uh, near the uh, West Antarctic sector. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in this case, there is very little uh, influence uh, to the, uh, to the uh, Antarctica. So uh, to summarize, uh, this is the schematic feature of our, our uh, study, I mean, for the second mode. Uh, first mode is, uh, as I mentioned, it's driven by external forcing, but the second mode is uh, somehow driven by internal variability, uh, like warm SST anomaly and the existence of a trans Antarctic mountain. Uh, Warm uh, SST anomaly uh, uh, help develop this kind of uh, anti-cyclonic uh, atmospheric circulation field. Then this brings a very warm uh, maritime air to this area first, and then uh, including this uh, Antarctic Peninsula. So entire West Antarctic uh, can be warmed. But this uh, air is blocked by this uh, trans Antarctic mountain. So the warm air cannot uh, be provided to the uh, eastern part. So uh, that's why we have some cold anomaly here and then warm anomaly in the western part. That's what we are uh, figuring out. So a summary, uh, Antarctic climate change has two distinct modes, global change mode and west-east asymmetry mode. The first mode, might be driven by external forcing, such as orbital parameter, volcanic eruption, solar activity, or uh, anthropogenically or naturally driven uh, greenhouse gases. The second mode, on the other hand, is a warm west, cold east uh, asymmetric mode, uh, originated from a surface ocean warming over the uh, Amundsen Bellingshausen sector that have develop anti-cyclonic circulation and providing warm air to the Amundsen Sea and West Antarctica, but blocked by Trans-Antarctic Mountain, 
So the warm air cannot penetrate into eastern part. Uh, if global warming continues, substantial temperature increase is expected not only in the western part and also in East Antarctica. This, this will uh, induce a massive melting of ice in addition to ongoing very fast retreat of uh, ice uh, in West Antarctica. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's really interesting. It's, it's great to see, great to see that work presented. Thank you. So, um, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask? I have a question, if no one sure. else does. So the, just to check in this, in, it was really interesting to see the simulations with uh, different or orography heights, um, sensitivity studies. Mm -hmm. And I wondered, I just wanted to clarify, are those different patterns of um, variability in the different setups in the top panel, those east-west uh, asymmetries? You mean the, uh, actually we checked this, uh, whether there is some different pattern uh, with a different uh, period, but uh, yeah, there is some, uh, if you if you use very uh, short term, like we checked from 1982 to 2012, and another 1958 to 2012, then you have a, a little bit different answer because this uh, internal mode is a multi-decadal variability. So if you use a little bit shorter period, shorter uh, uh, interval, then uh, you do not uh, uh, capture this kind of a west is the asymmetry very well. So yeah. this is, so you need to use a, a very long, long data, long-term data to reproduce this kind of a multi-decadal uh, variability uh, or internal variability. Yeah. So these are atmosphere only simulations, aren't they? No, no, no. This is, uh, oh. we used this one uh, a couple of the atmosphere. Okay. Uh, I'm okay. The surface, surface, this is a SST and ocean circulation, the oceanic current. Yeah. The arrow, not the atmospheric wind. So yeah. actually, it keeps some uh, southward, more or less uh, this way, uh, uh, circulation by ECMA pumping. Because if you have an anti cyclonic anomaly here, you give this kind of. Uh, I'm sorry, we have some fire uh, drill right now. <laughs> what a coincidence. Anyway, uh, if you have an anti-cyclonic anomaly field, then you have this kind of uh, echo pumping toward the uh, Antarct uh, western part of the Antarctic uh, sector. So you have a warm water provided to this, this part, and then that gives some this warm anomaly uh, feedback. I mean, rain first the warm anomaly. So where, where there is a warm anomaly, then there is a, a even stronger Antarctic uh, cyclonic, I mean, anti-cyclonic anti circulation anomaly is maintained. That, that's kind of a via. Uh, yeah. Kind of, uh, hmm? Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah, I've got I one. Have, um, I'm sorry, you, you have first yeah. crack. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, just uh, it's it's really interesting to see the critical role of the Transantarctic Mountains in sort of separating that circulation. I mean, so they're not a perfect barrier, right? In real life, so so as the resolution um, comes down in scale and you resolve sort of some of the porosity, do you, do you think that separation would still hold? I mean, the yeah. when you increase the resolution or the yeah, yeah, you know, I think in guess in terms of specifically mm -hmm. maybe where the David Glacier comes out, there's actually quite a you know 10, 20 kilometer wide gap there, and and is is that enough to affect this sort of conclusion? 
I, I guess so, because this warm, warm anomaly is originated from the ocean. The ocean is very low level. So uh, uh, you have some uh, uh, lower and then higher is Antarctica. So this warm air is around, you know, very low level. So uh, even though you have some higher resolution or more realistic topography, I guess you still might have some influence by this very huge, you know, difference in the uh, topography between west and east. Yeah. So, okay. um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah, not, nice talk. Um, I just wanted to follow up. I guess uh, Tom asked about the coupled nature. So you've got the ocean dynamics there. And so if I understand correctly, you're proposing that there's this amplifying feedback from the ocean where a different geometry of the of the ice sheet over the West Antarctic region drives a different wind field, and that wind field drives Ekman transport that gives you further temperature changes. Is that right. is that correct? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we don't know which, yeah. which one is first, anti-cyclonic anomaly first, or warm SST uh, anomaly goes first. We don't know exactly, but they are tightly oh. coupled. So once, for some reason, there is a warm anomaly in the Western Antarctic sector, then that help develop uh, anti-cyclonic atmospheric circulation that provide ECMAN pumping and uh, even provide warm water to the further to the, uh, the continental shelf and and so on does this feedback goes on on and on yeah yeah, sure. yeah that's very nice it's a very nice result mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you saw one of my grad students Rishaf Goyal had a paper out recently about the Amazon sea low being being set by the the topography of the Antarctic ice sheet um it reminds me of his work the way you flattened Antarctica and then changed the western oh. Antarctic oh that's that's okay. great yeah uh, uh, thank, I'm sorry, thank you uh, can I ask you for asking this? Oh, Matthew, or was it? Yes. Oh, yeah, that okay. Was, that was me. Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm uh, my camera's off because I actually had to get on the move. I've I've had to go pick up a, one of my kids from school, so I had to switch my camera off and just go to audio. Okay. Thanks for uh, participation. Uh, Shiva is here. So Shiva, do you have any question? No, 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 not at the moment. Thank you for okay. your. Yeah. Um, it's Eric here. Um, I have a quick question again uh, regarding the um, so the um, principal component two pattern. I mean, uh, um, is if I recall correctly, there are also some studies showing links between um, Enzo and the Amundsen Sea Low, which um, suggests sort of a similar pattern to what you were seeing in this kind of deep hole pattern. Um, have you checked for that? Or is, is this this kind of variability, um, is there a link between um, those principal component two and the ENSO? Uh, thanks for a good question. We actually checked with our mode, UF1 and 2 with this ENSO index. But some uh, for some reason, they do not have any uh, big correlation, annual mean or seasonal mean. So, uh, they might uh, influence to the uh, Antarctic uh, um, emergency low uh, anomaly that might give some feedback to SST or uh, atmospheric circulation. But uh, for some reason, uh, it doesn't have a, a strong correlation with this, our uh, UF1 and 2. So uh, we in, uh, also, uh, uh, and so influence uh, Austral uh, summer season probably st more stronger than uh, winter. Uh, so we kind of interpreted, uh, and so is not directly influenced with this Antarctic mode. They might influence indirectly via uh, Amundsen's law or something like that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay. I think that's, that might be all the questions. So um, thank you again uh, for giving your talk. I will go, I'm going to um, stop the recording now.